This is Sky News. The main story is the Home Secretary has described as utterly unacceptable, a report which shows that more than a quarter of all sex offences are not being recorded as crimes by police. A Sky News investigation has uncovered that bed blocking in hospitals across England has reached its highest level for four years. And a British man is among four people who've been killed by attackers armed with axes and knives at a synagogue in Jerusalem. Well, let's bring you the latest on that with our foreign affairs editor, Sam Kiley. So what more do we know about the victims? Well, there are now reports coming out that uh, uh, three of them are Americans. One is confirmed as being British. So that is all of the dead so far. And there are more who are seriously injured, but all of the dead so far are um, immigrants to Israel, all with dual nationality. Now, their um, families and so on are being informed at the moment. The names are out there, but we're obviously not using them until the family next to kin have been informed. Um, and they were, a majority of them were rabbis, and very easily identifiable uh, as men of religion in any case, be because, of course, first of all, they're in not only a, a synagogue, but uh, a very orthodox synagogue in which the all of the traditional robes and tefillin, which is the strap that people wear around their arms to sort of focus their spiritual thoughts when they're praying. A lot of them would have had them on uh, when this attack was conducted. So there's no accident, obviously, about invading a synagogue uh, and then setting about people. There was one firearm used and the rest was knives and machetes were used in these uh, killings, which uh, eyewitnesses and people who were in on the ground very quickly after that said it was an extremely gruesome scene, obviously. Sam, thank you very much indeed. Sam Kiley there. Well, I'm joined now by Dr Azam Tamimi, a British-Palestinian academic and former Hamas advisor. And a very good afternoon to you, Dr Tamimi. Now, uh, however oppressed the Palestinian people are, is an attack like this justifiable? Well, you see, for the Palestinians who seem to have lost uh, all hope uh, in uh, providing uh, protection for their lives, for their properties, you're bound to get uh, some uh, people who will uh, resort to such regrettable uh, attacks. Uh, it is uh, very sad that uh, religion uh, is becoming increasingly uh, uh, an integral part of this uh, conflict, a conflict which started as a purely political one. Uh, but uh, I would blame the Israeli establishment for this, because they've been uh, allowing Jewish settlers to encroach on uh, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Uh, they've been demolishing people's houses. They've been confiscating people's lands. Uh, settlements are uh, growing everywhere. Uh, it's a very sad situation, indeed. Mm. I mean, you've kind of explained why it happened, the background, so it's understandable. But in your view, is it justifiable? Those are different things. Well, it, it doesn't really um, uh, make much sense, uh, the, the word justifiable, because uh, for the people who did this, for them it is justifiable. Of course, for someone like me who is living here in the UK and thinking that probably one day we will be able uh, to reach some sort of settlement whereby uh, human life is uh, respected and, and protected, of course, uh, it's a different matter. But what really matters is to try and uh, see how people see it on the ground. Uh, the way people see it on the ground is that the Israeli government and various by, by the way, various Israeli political parties uh, are competing in order to appease the settlers and the expansionist movement at the expense of the Palestinians. So where is this going to lead? It's going to lead to mayhem. And this is the mayhem we've been seeing uh, all over the region. So how do we get it back, in your view, Dr. Tamimi, to a political conflict, a political conflict without violent actions? Well, I think to start with, uh, there has to be a decisive position on the part of the Israeli government that the Al-Aqsa Mosque should not be toyed with, should not be manipulated, should not be encroached upon, because that's a very sensitive issue indeed. Uh, and then secondly, there has uh, to be a stop uh, to the confiscation of uh, lands, to the demolishing of, of houses. Uh, and then let's talk back again. Let's, uh, let's talk about how we can uh, uh, get out of this predicament. But it would also take Hamas, would it not, in particular, Hamas not to celebrate an attack like this. We heard a spokesman, we've had, uh, had a clip of them on a little bit earlier, celebrating this attack, and for Hamas overall to say that it doesn't want to destroy the Israeli state. The Israelis are always going to feel threatened with that sort of Damocles hanging over them. Well, this argument is really uh, uh, inverted on top of its head. It's, it's, uh, it's a reversal of, of common sense. It's we, the Palestinians, who have been destroyed. It's us whose land have been taken from us. The Israelis have not yet 
acknowledged what they did to us uh, since 1948. So to, uh, to throw the ball into Hamas uh, court, uh, I don't think it, it serves a purpose. Furthermore, this is not a Hamas issue. This is a sentimental Palestinian issue. Palestinian man, young men and women who are not affiliated with any political party uh, are, are being pushed to a corner. And uh, my understanding is that the perpetrators of this attack are not even Hamas members. Yeah, well, that doesn't matter, though, because uh, Hamas have said that, uh, you know, they're quite pleased about it, that they support it. Well, that's the, that's the Palestinian sentiment in general. And I, I would be lying to you if I, if I were to, uh, to conceal this. This is a Palestinian sentiment that the Israelis have caused this to happen, that the Israelis have to uh, heed some lesson out of this. Uh, and if you're going to kill us and if you're going to destroy our houses, uh, then unfortunately it is a tit for tat and it's, uh, it's an endless process. Yeah, tit for tat. I mean, men going about uh, their religious duties praying in a synagogue. They're not exactly, uh, to use the parlance, legitimate targets, are they? That is true. I agree with you. I, and I, I, I wouldn't uh, approve of such uh, targets. But remember that it was the Palestinian worshippers who have been targeted on numerous occasions, from the Hebron massacre in 1994 to various other uh, attacks on mosques, and especially on Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is not only uh, important to the Palestinian Muslims, but also to Muslims worldwide. So I, I think it's the Israeli government and the Israeli establishment that is to blame for all of this. OK, well, uh, you mentioned the words, the words tit for tat. I mean, it's so long ago uh, that uh, the, the chicken and eggs argument started. How do both sides, let's allow an equivalence here, how do, how do both sides stop the violence? Well, I don't agree that this is a check and egg issue. I, I know exactly what happened to my mother and her house, to my father and his land. And I know who lives in their, in their land and their houses, people who came from Europe, because Europe once had a problem. Uh, we can resolve this if the Israelis are willing to sit with the Palestinians and say to them, we, we are sorry for what we did to you. Can we share the land? Can we live together? The, the Israelis have never said this. Through the Oslo deal, they wanted to turn the Palestinians into some sort of lackeys, some sort of agents working for them. Th there is no mutual respect. There is no mutual recognition. That's the real problem. OK, Dr. Tamimi, thank you very much indeed for your time. Azam Tamimi there. And, uh,